Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and I have the distinct pleasure today to present you with one of the most impressive displays of player skill and decision making I have ever seen in World of Warships, right up until the point where it very suddenly isn't. This is Matey 83 cz I'm pretty sure he's from the Czech Republic, and he's in the British Tier 10 light cruiser HMS Minotaur. HMS Minotaur has a ridiculous number of rapid-firing 6-inch guns with extremely quick turret traverse because this ship was, on paper at least, uh, designed with dual-purpose gun batteries that were designed to track and engage fast-moving aircraft. It therefore comes as no surprise that the Minotaur also has extremely strong anti-aircraft firepower. Although it was unusual, in the, the British light cruisers were the first line of light cruisers introduced to the game that had strong anti-aircraft firepower and didn't also get the defensive fire consumable. So it's probably fair to say that pound for pound, the British light cruisers technically, on paper at least, had better AA than even American light cruisers. Situationally, however, that's not quite the case because the American cruisers have the ability to call upon that defensive AA consumable to massively boost their anti-aircraft firepower right when they need it the most, and the British cruisers can't do that, although it doesn't really seem to help the American cruisers too much, even with a defensive AA. Certainly not since the carrier rework at least, so perhaps not having the option to choose between hydro or defensive AA fire is actually a good thing, because hydro generally much more versatile and useful consumable. That doesn't mean that Minotaur captains get away scot-free, however, there is one significant choice that they have to make, and that is whether or not to choose the smokescreen consumable, which Matey here has done, or go for radar. Generally speaking, most Minotaur captains tend to go for the smokescreen. It is by far the safer and easiest choice. Because when you're in a ship as lightly armoured and fragile as this, that takes huge amounts of citadel damage from armour-piercing shots, especially from battleships, having the ability to go undetected in an emergency can be a lifesaver. However, radar minotaur captains do exist and they often catch enemy destroyers fatally unprepared. Hands up all those of us who've been playing tier 10 battles, scanned the enemy team list, thought, hooray, no radar cruisers. Because the minotaur's not a radar cruiser, is it? Took a double dose of brave pills, drove our destroyers straight into the nearest cap circle and then realized the hard way that there is actually a radar cruiser on the enemy team and when you're getting shot at by one of these things and you're in a destroyer it's a brown alert moment because with a base 3.2 second reload the rate of fire of these 10 6 inch guns is something in the region of 187 shots per minute and since the turrets can rotate at 38 degrees per second it doesn't matter if you're on the wrong side of the minotaur when you're detected the wrong side can very, very quickly suddenly become the right side, or from your perspective, still the wrong side. Anyway, Matey's tucked in here behind this very convenient island in the northern end of Capture Point Charlie. Unfortunately, there's an enemy ship on the other side. Don't know who it is, and that's kind of alarming. We know it's not the Masashi, the Nevsky or the Bismarck, and it's not the Daring because he's engaged in Capture Point Alpha on the other side of the map, so there is another enemy ship in here that we don't yet know about. This is a great spot for capping out if the enemy team don't make it up here at the same time as you. You're obviously protected from direct fire from enemy ships to the south by the bulk of the island. You do have to watch out, however, for crossfire from the middle of the map if you get radared, hydroed, or spotted by aircraft. Oh, mystery solved. There's a Megami right on the other side of the island. He's the one who's blocking the capture. Right, the team have just lost a Bismarck. That's less than good. Not a great start. He has managed to go undetected, however. I think it may have been the Megami's spotter plane that got him lit up, but now somebody has direct line of sight. Oh, that's not good. That's very, very bad. That's the Masashi. Oh, this could be painful. That could have been a lot more painful, but this could still be painful. That was fairly painful, but not as painful as it could have been. He didn't take any citadels. Well then, now here comes the rear turret. Yeah, that was a citadel. <laughs> that was very, very bad. <laughs> that was the opposite of good. Yeah, let's uh, let's quickly tuck in behind the island again. Uh, let's not have that happen again. Now, he's lost sight of the Masashi, but he has a rough idea of where he was and which direction he was heading and at what speed. So he 
Gosh. Dumps a bunch of Hail Mary torpedoes into the water, which are almost certainly going to be spotted. Very probably by that Bismarck. But what's done is done. No use crying about it. And that's the source of the crossfire that he was getting from the middle of the map. The enemy Minotaur. He can actually now shoot at the Minotaur without being detected, because the Minotaur is now out of direct line of sight. Unfortunately, he's strayed just a little bit too far forward, and the Alexander Nevsky can definitely see him. Luckily, the Nevsky is not actually shooting at him. He pops his smoke anyway, and the Megami decides to uh, scupper that plan by popping his Hydro. Oh, the torpedoes have found something. And it's not the Bismarck. That actually might even be the Bismarck's Hydro that's running. So that's pretty impressive, actually. I mean, those torpedoes, I think, hydro from just about the second they were launched, and they still managed to hit something. The Bismarck's coming around the corner, though, and Matey would dearly love to torpedo him, but the friendly Megami is doing his level best to cock-block him. And yes, sure, the Bismarck will see the torpedoes coming, but seeing them coming at this kind of range and being able to do something about it are two entirely different things. Wait, no, I get it. The friendly Megami's going to torpedo the Bismarck himself. Except he doesn't. He's bringing 6-inch guns to a torpedo fight with a 15-inch gun armed battleship. The enemy Megami is certainly not shy about using his torpedoes, although he should probably also be using his guns, because right now he's losing that fight. Matey's first wave of torpedoes very nearly finished the Bismarck off, but it's the second wave of torpedoes that get the job done. He's managed to avoid all of the Megami's torpedoes. The Masashi took a shot at him, which he managed to avoid dying to which is entirely possible, given the amount of health that he has remaining and the calibre of the Masashi's guns. Still can't quite see where the Masashi is. He's going to fire some more Hail Mary torpedoes, which seemed to do quite well against the Masashi earlier, even though he had no idea where he was then either. The Masashi's spotter plane, and the Megami's spotter plane for that matter, appear to have him located, but, well, his anti-aircraft guns should be able to do something about that very, very quickly. Where did the Megami go? disappeared around the side of the island. Oh, hang on a second, the smoke screen's still there, and there's the Masashi. Well, he's only got a couple of seconds of smoke left, but he may as well use it. He's far enough away that the Masashi can't see him shooting through the smoke, and unfortunately none of those torpedoes are going to hit, but, well, he would have been extremely lucky to get that lucky twice. Where is the Megami? There's still somebody in the cap circle. It must be the Megami. He can't be that far away. There he is. Oh, he's reversing out. He must be trying to launch torpedoes. Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> what is it about Megami's in this battle? The friendly Megami insisted on trying to bring guns to a torpedo fight, and that guy kept trying to bring torpedoes to what was very clearly a gunfight, and it didn't really work out very well for either of them. Well, the Megami's been disposed of, and now the enemy Masashi is also inside the cap circle, but... Oh, this... the torpedoes are ready to go on this side, aren't they? Or are they? I think they are. Then again, at this kind of range? It's all going to depend on which way the Masashi's guns are pointing. Yes, the torpedoes are ready, but the guns are probably going to be enough to do... Oh dear, they're all pointing the wrong way. Well, that is unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we may as well fire the torpedoes. And then, sort of casually saunter into cover behind this island here as the Masashi vainly struggles to get the guns turned around and pointed in the correct direction. How are the torpedoes going to do? Oh, they're looking pretty good. Oh, he is turning to try to get the guns to bear. Oh, no. Oh, he's probably going to eat four, five. He's dead. Yep. Yeah. This, is, this is an ex-Musashi. He's finished it. That was bloody impressive. Matey here was basically alone against three enemy ships, to all intents and purposes. I mean, the friendly Megami didn't do anything other than stop him from firing the torpedoes when he needed to. Three enemy ships, a Bismarck, a Masashi, and a Megami, and he killed all three of them, using every tool in the box. The speed, the maneuverability, he used the guns when he needed to, he used the torpedoes when he needed to, and when the friendly Megami would let him, he used concealment. That was a masterclass in using a light cruiser against three enemy ships at the same time and killing all three of them. But down to the south, it looks like Player 4 is attempting to enter the match. The enemy Minotaur. He's being pursued and hopefully 
shot at by the friendly Frederick the Great. Mate, he really needs to get this cap under his belt, however, which he should be able to do without any problems. And unfortunately, he has managed to run aground. Not a huge issue in the Minotaur. It can be a problem in other cruisers which have very, very sluggish engine responses, but the Minotaur um, in particular, and British light cruisers in general, tend to have extremely good engine response. I can quite clearly remember being astonished at how these things actually put speed on when they're in a full hard rudder turn. They're the only ships in the game that can do it, with the exception possibly of some of the destroyers. But certainly no other cruisers can accelerate while in a full turn like the British light cruisers can. Okay, that smoke screen down to the south must be the enemy Minotaur. He was getting shot at by the Frederick the Great, and it's good. It's good that he smoked up because it means Matey can sneak up on him undetected. Remember, smoke screens are equal opportunity employers. They work both ways. You can't see into a smoke screen, but the person inside the smoke screen can't see out of it either. He's probably running his hydro, but it's a British hydro. It doesn't have the range of German hydro. So he should be able to get relatively close and then pop his own hydro and hopefully catch that Minotaur completely by surprise. And his own hydro is about to come off cooldown and it's ready to go. He's popped it instantly. This is a, yeah, this is exactly the right thing to do. He's angling. Which means he'll only be able to use his front guns, but lightly armoured though it may be, you can still angle in a Minotaur against 6-inch guns, like the ones found on an enemy Minotaur. Enemy Minotaur is panicking, as well he should, and he's been finished off by the Frederick the Great. But did you notice that Matey managed to get that tiny little island over there between himself and that Iowa? This is what he's been doing the whole game. Fighting multiple enemy ships, but ensuring that only one of them could actually fight him at the same time by using the terrain, using concealment, and using his head. It's here, however, where it's probably safe to say that Matey starts trying to win just that little bit harder. They have all four caps, they're 400 points ahead, the Iowa is pointing in the right direction, and so are his guns. Matey was extremely lucky to survive that. The Iowa, however, is not going to survive that. There's High Calibre and Confederate. Was that a mistake? Was he trying to win harder? I mean, the team were 400 points ahead. They're 500 points ahead now that he sunk the Iowa. Uh, they have all three of the cap circles, and they were four against four. I, I, I think it's fairly safe to say he was consumed by a little bit of bloodlust there and was definitely trying to win just that little bit harder. But at the same time, there was no way he was getting out of there without fighting the Iowa. They were just too close, and that island was not big enough for him to be able to hide behind it forever. So one way or the other, he and the Iowa were going to have a fight. He was extremely lucky to survive the fight. And the team have just lost yet another cruiser. Uh, but he did survive the fight, and the Iowa didn't. It's now three on three, and the enemy team are flipping one of the caps. Hang on a minute. They're 500 points ahead. They still have two of the caps. Uh, and they keep losing ships. They're not 500 points ahead anymore, but how much time is left? If they hadn't just lost those two ships, this could have been a just stay alive and we're going to win on points scenario. Except now it isn't. I'm not sure whether or not the rest of the ships on his team were consumed by the desire to win any harder than they already were or not. But the fact of the matter is that they've gone from a just stay alive and we win on points situation to a we're probably going to have to sink something else situation. Or have they? Because, well, with the amount of capture points that they have, despite the loss of those two ships, they are still accumulating points fast enough that they're still 500 points ahead, more or less. So maybe they don't have to kill anything. Maybe just run away and stay alive and we win is still on the table. The enemy team are just about to finish capping A, and they have, and there they are. Well, two of them at least. It would be nice to know where the San Luis is before committing to anything rash, especially when you're pinned up against the side of an island here, which is going to severely restrict your ability to manoeuvre if you do decide to suddenly start shooting at things. So matey, and it has to be said very wisely, ah there's the San Luis. 
decides to not suddenly start shooting at things. But now that he does know where the San Luis is, it has expanded his list of available options. Unfortunately, as one door opens, another one closes. Right as he says in chat to the mains, mains just stay alive and <laughs> we're going to win, the mains get sunk. And now he's only 400 points ahead and his options are decreasing. Wait a minute, matey, what are you doing? You only have 12,000 health left, you're going to get shot at, what are you doing? There's a method to his madness here. This is actually pretty clever. He only started shooting right as he passed out of line of sight behind the island. He's gone undetected already, and the return fire is not going to hit him. But what that has done... Yes, it has telegraphed his current location to the enemy team, but his best chance of winning is to try to distract them from going for the other two caps. See if they want to try to win a little bit harder and chase down the final kill. Because he does still have two of the caps. And if he can hold on to them, I mean, he's back up to 700 points. I'm not sure whether or not shooting again from here was particularly smart. Uh, because he has been spotted. And the San Luis is taking the bait. I guess... Ooh. <laughs> the... Um, Priority target indicator is giving him some useful information though, because I can guarantee you if the other two ships were capable of shooting at him, they would be. Which does give him some very useful information, because wherever they are, the Nevsky and the Rune, they're not in firing range. And the San Luis appears to be taking the bait. He's motoring right through that cap circle, desperately trying to finish Matey off. The question is, is he going to keep up the pursuit, or is he going to do the smart thing and stay in the cap circle? Time will tell. He's still in there at the moment. Torpedoes both sides of the island. More Hail Marys. He's gotten lucky with them once so far. Very nearly got lucky with them the second time. Will he get lucky with them the third time? I guess we're going to find out. Somebody is still in Bravo. They are still capping. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. I think the enemy team have to catch him and kill him. Because he is still 400 points ahead. Okay, he only has one cap now. Up there in Charlie. The one that he flipped himself. But, look at the time remaining. There's only two and a half minutes left. I do love, by the way, that on my new 4K monitor... In the editing suite, I can actually see in the video preview that there's two and a half minutes left. <laughs> Something that wouldn't have been possible on my old 1080p monitor. Oh, is one of those torpedoes going to... Oh, oh, you beauty, get in there. Wasn't a kill, but hey, extra damage is extra damage. It's 237,000 damage done. You know, I think it's going to be enough. I'm pretty sure that with two minutes remaining, even if the enemy team take the final cap, there's no way they can make up a 500 point deficit. So, quite literally, the only thing that Matey now has to do is stay alive. And it's at about this point. I mean, up until now, he's pretty much made the exact right decision every time. And I thought, as he launches more torpedoes around the side of the island in his fourth Hail Mary, hoping to catch the San Luis again, I thought that he was about to do something incredibly clever and sneaky. Gets the torpedoes away. And he pops his smoke. What I thought he was doing here was trying to sucker them into chasing the smoke screen while he buggers off in another direction. Keeping them guessing and fruitlessly chasing after shadows right up until the end of the match. That would have just been the icing on the cake. That's what I thought he was doing. If he had, that would have been just amazing. The ultimate screw you to the enemy team. That, however, is not what he's doing. You see, he's forgotten one crucial thing. There is still an Alexander Nevsky on the enemy team. And the Alexander Nevsky is a radar cruiser. And if you drop a smoke screen in front of a radar cruiser, that's the metaphorical equivalent of showing a red flag to a bull. If your smoke screen is in radar range, it's going to get radared. And if you're inside that smoke screen, you're going to get radared. Which is why it would have been amazing if he dropped the smoke screen and then continued further south. Laughing at the Nevsky's wasted radar, 
as he proceeded merrily along his way, but the Nevsky's radar has been anything but wasted. He is spotted, and they can all see him. So you can bet your ass they're all shooting at him, because they absolutely must kill him in order to win. Capping is not going to be enough. I suspect at this point Matey was seriously regretting his sudden decision to start playing with the enemy team at the end of this match, but despite his sudden rush of shit to the brain, the clock hits zero, he survives with 23 health remaining. <laughs> and that is, in fact, on balance, I have to say, an extremely well-deserved win. He so very nearly threw it all away in the dying seconds, but in the end, justice was done. And I hope you agree, because that is it for today. Matey, thank you so much for sending that replay in. Everyone else, you know the score by now. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.